Ladies and gentlemen, gentlemen and ladies, ladies and gents, got a little bit of something, something we about to show y'all. We're going to talk a little bit about Aloidio Taito. I know people have heard that name and I was reading something and somebody gave a suggestion, said they had not heard the word before a particular moment. We're going to turn down the OJs because they talking about making up, you know. And it sounds a lot like Lenny Williams style, this particular song by the OJs. And it's just Lenny Williams did a song and he has a similar beat to it and similar rhythm to it. And so it came across as, you know, almost Lenny Williams-ish. Now you can go, this is what you're going to type into Google. Allodio title via land patent material. That's what you're going to type in. You go, a loyal title via land patent. Okay, and you're going to get the whole document there at the Freedom School. Freedom! Freedom! Oh, no, not that freedom. Okay, okay, not that, shut up, not that freedom. This is the document I'm interested in. When you do the search, this is the one that caught my attention. Did it catch your attention? Just snatched it right out of midair. Said, get over here, attention! And I said, but I don't want to get over there. And my attention said, I don't care what you want. Ladies and gentlemen, I am pointing you to this document because when I was reading it, I saw how accurate some of it was. I can't tell you all of it is accurate because I haven't looked at the whole thing. Okay. I'm sorry. I know I'm not supposed to be yelling, but... Y'all be talking in my ear while I'm talking and y'all just get on my last nerve. Y'all know how I mean. Y'all know what I'm saying. You're getting on my last nerve. So pay attention. Is a provision a regulation? Well, what this junk was talking about, in order for a statute, and I loved it, in order for a statute to be valid and or to be implementing, it has to have a corresponding regulation. That's what I was reading. Oh, and then they have questions you ask your banker and it gives you an education. And when I saw it talk about the regulation, oh, and I tell you, when I say regulation, I want y'all to understand regulation. See, regulation. Regulation. Okay? So there you go. And implementation regulation. All right? So here it is. It says, statutes, when applied to the public, must have a corresponding administrative code. This is called regulating the public. The public is regulated people or implementing regulation. Regulation. To give it force and effect of law. Excuse me, why? Who said that? Because it's an administrative system. I'm sorry. Like I said, I don't mean to yell, but some of you guys just aren't getting it. This is according to the Administrative Procedures Act when they went to an administrative system. This is Title V of the United States Code, people, the Administrative Procedures Act. A statute by itself, then, is it affects, oh, excuse me, as it affects the public, is no law without a regulation. And it's expressly null and void. You can look up the code. Okay? Pay attention. That is the very premise for my appeal that has been pending for three years is that they tried to apply a statute for which there was no regulation and the Supreme Court stated there was no regulation. Sorry, buddy. And because the way I'm bringing up the argument, they can't get around it because you know how I do. I go to foundations and I just do like they did in the World Trade Center. I just undermine the foundation of the building. So the whole building collapsed, not just parts of it. I go after the whole, you, well, you know what I'm saying, how they went into the building two weeks before the whole trade center incident happened and they did some construction work. No, they were undermining the structure. How do we know? Can we prove that? Sure, we can. We just go back in time, have Superman fly around the world about three times a week, you know, and then go back without missing a beat and you know there you go all right is a provision a regulation to decide whether a provision is a regulation the agency must consider whether its effect to the public 
or whether it affects the public or is used by the agency in dealing with the public. Ladies and gentlemen, who determines whether a provision is a regulation? It says the agency gets to make that determination. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, that's what you need, need to understand. It's administrative. The whole system is administrative. That's what I liked about this. Final agency attorney legal review on page nine of the regulation adopting process. See, this is how they adopt regulation. It states the agency attorney will review the substance of the regulation for its legality, constitutionality, and consistency with other regulations. The agency comes up with it under the APA. Okay, we're going to do that because I know that ain't supposed to be supplemented, but it's supplemented and I don't think it's going to let me edit. Let's see if it's going to let me edit. Come on now. Let me edit. Nope. It's a no edit. See, hourglass, no edit. It's a hourglass, no edit. So I can't edit. I can edit later when you guys are not looking. Okay. See how it did that, but it ain't letting me do it no more popped up when I didn't want it to pop up and when I blinked it was gone so no edit y'all sorry yeah because it just it just says no well anyway ladies and gentlemen this is letting you know the statutes are not law they never were oh by the way they, they even go into the paying of taxes now I done messed up you see how this is all mixed up and combobulated this can be blobulated who is this Cry me a river, Justin Timberlake. You got Justin Timberlake on your computer. That don't make no sense. Why'd you put Justin Timberlake on there? Nobody listen to Justin Timberlake. Oh God, that whole Prince thing? That was that was a fluke. He couldn't even oh, he can't dance to save a poor man's life, let alone his own. Sorry, ladies and gentlemen. Um, this is what I tell people when they give me their little sob stories about crying me a river. Okay. Now, there was a, a party who contacted me and asked for my help and told me they valued my time. Um, I'm about to let them know that I am not going to sit up here indefinitely. Okay, this is me letting them know that I'm not going to wait indefinitely because I decided I would extend my help to them, as I told them, only if the issue was legitimate. If it is not legitimate, then I'm not going to help, I'm not going to waste my time. Uh, but I'm not going to sit up here and be waiting on hands and feet. Sorry, I don't do that for nobody. So, uh, ladies and gentlemen, as I said, I don't have, I don't care if you guys think you understand when I say I don't have the time to help you. Let me see if I can explain it to you so you get it, because some of you are not getting it. I'm finally able to go and say, hey, everybody, I was right. Thanks to my God, who I serve, Jehovah. I was right. Why? Because I said that you are an investor in your property. Oh, you were guessing before then? No, I knew exactly what I was talking about, but I had nothing succinct from the court to prove it to you until we looked at that case where the judge actually says that you are a beneficiary in your mortgage. Ladies and gentlemen, that creates a conflict of interest because the trustee is supposed to represent the beneficiaries. How can you be a beneficiary in that agreement, the trustee representing the beneficiaries, and pay attention, the contract says that he represents the beneficiaries. It does not say he represents only this beneficiary or that beneficiary. Did you know that if one beneficiary says, no, I don't want to sue, they can't sue? They can't foreclose? So withdraw your consent from the trustee to foreclose on your property. Just send them a letter saying, as a beneficiary, and do exactly what I did. I showed you guys the portion of the judge's decision that you applied to yourself. Hold on. 
I did something, you know, I am going to have to put you guys on pause because I do realize this particular document has some personal information. So when we come back, Justin Timberlake going to be gone. I know y'all were hoping and wishing he was. Well, one second, okay? I told y'all he would be gone by the time we came back. Pay attention. This is, oh, love power. Jeffrey Osborne and Dion Horick. I mean, you know what I'm saying. To whom it may concern. This is regarding the remake, the mortgage investment, con real estate mortgage investment conduit. See? Remick. As a matter of fact, in the future, that's exactly what I'm going to do. Is I'm going to highlight these this acronym because it is necessary that they know that I know that they know that I know what I'm talking about. Forgot the M. Come on, B. And got to get the M. This is love, let's do. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, take a look. It says the property is located at the same paragraph that appears in all of them, appears to have been subject to the rules, regulations, and laws associated with securities. As a beneficiary, where are my benefits? It is surprising to the point of astonishment that the securitization trustee has not complied with the terms of the pooling and servicing agreement and further has not substantially complied with the laws of the state whereby the trust was created in attempting to obtain assignment of the note and mortgage associated with the aforesaid properties. Pay attention. Hold on. Shut up. Shut up. Shut up. Shut up. Somebody's out there trying to say, I know where you got that from. I know exactly what you're doing. I know what's saying that right now. Shut up. That's exactly my point. Just shut it up. Okay. Not there. That's not the one. I got to open it up. Sorry. Give me one second, y'all. Not a loyal title. I need not that one. Not that one. Not that one. Where is it at? You know what, ladies and gentlemen? I opened it up. You all saw me open. Oh, because I moved it. Okay. I apologize. I moved it. So that's why we ain't going to find it. Okay. The reason why we not going to find it because I moved the document. So when I restarted the computer and I moved the document to another folder, we're not going to find it. So now I got to go and find it. Okay. We got our L'Oreal title document. So we got those. Now we got to go here. Because I put it here, and now we got to go all the way down here. There it is, the Horace document. Horace? This ain't the right Horace document. This is just a shortcut. Okay, let's see if the shortcut, because it's only one kilobyte, so that shortcut is not the shortcut we need. Okay, but it was the way I didn't save the document like I was supposed to. So let's see if it pulls it up. I, I, I have the document stored. I have the PDF. You know what? I should have just opened the PDF. I don't even know what I'm thinking about, y'all. I'm thinking about doing, you know how it is when you do things the round away, long way. Oh, well, it pulled up anyway. So let's do, nope, it didn't pull up. This is the actual Horace document. This is the one I'm working on. This is the one where I'm going to take what the attorney put in his document and create a lawsuit out of it. So by the end of the week, my hope is by the end of the week, I'll have that done. I can't promise it. I can only tell you that's my intent. He's got some intentions, Your Honor. Yeah, he says he's got some intentions. Well, well let me ask him, what you intending on doing? No, he just, he just wants to know so he can be prepared. He, he said, Your Honor, he told me to tell you it's none of your mother. I mean, well, he, he told me I couldn't say that to you, but you want me to be truthful. So he said, hold on, let me pause everybody else so they can't hear me tell you what, what business it ain't yours. Okay, hold on one second. Okay, that's the type of conversation y'all don't want to be a part of. Neither do I. So I'm going to let them talk and we're going to just ignore them in the background. Okay. Um, you know, if, if anybody... You hear any gunshots or anything, that's because he shouldn't have talked, okay? 
Second, the plaintiff, Horace, is a third-party beneficiary of a servicing and pooling agreement created by the defendant, Trust LaSalle National Bank. Indeed, without such pooling and servicing, the plaintiff, Horace, and other mortgagers similarly situated would never be able to obtain financing. Now, ladies and gentlemen, many of you are going to think that this is a far stretch. I can't do that. I don't know how you do that. It is surprising to the point of astonishment. Wait, pay attention. It's the same thing. I wrote, oh, I'm sorry. We got it. We're supposed to be at the part where it is astonishing because I put both in the same paragraph. You guys didn't see that? Okay. First, the court is surprised to the point of astonishment. Okay. So what I did is I said it is surprising to the point of astonishment that securitization trustee. The court said, the judge said, that the defendant trust LaSalle National Bank did not comply with the terms of its own servicing and pooling agreement. So what I did is I said that the securitization trustee has not complied with the terms of the servicing, pooling and servicing agreement, PSA, and further has not substantially complied with the laws of the state whereby the trust was created in an attempt to attain assignment of the note and the mortgage associated with the aforesaid properties. The court said, don't leave. Did not comply with the terms of his own servicing pooling agreement and further did not comply with the New York law in attempting to establish the assignment of the plaintiff Horace note and mortgage. Ladies and gentlemen, I didn't need all of that language. That language, all I did was just took the words of the paragraph and I reworded it. Your teachers have asked you to do that. If you've ever done a book report where the teacher said you need to put it in your own words, all you're doing is taking it and rewording it. So that's what I'm trying to tell you to do when you get this document right here. Sorry, my wrist froze up on me. That happens from time to time with my wrist. It actually locks up on me. Shouldn't have locked up, but it locked up, y'all. It just locked up, just like click, clack, you know, just locked up. Okay, please understand. I'm going to take these words of the attorney. I still got to edit the document so that everything lines up. Then I'll be editing it. I'll be changing the dates. I'll be changing some of the information. I'll be deleting a lot of the information because a lot of the information is not necessary for what I need to do. Okay. But that's what I'm telling you. You don't have to be a lawyer. You just take a case where a lawyer has had success and you duplicate what the lawyer brought to the court's attention. Guess what? Even if you can't prove a single point because the attorney couldn't prove anything, even if you can't prove a single point that you're bringing out, you still bring it out. Why? Because, ladies and gentlemen, as with the attorney, you have the right to bring forth the information. So just bring forth the information, put it in your own words, and introduce the information. Okay? Well, anyway, the document that we were putting out says this. After we get past that paragraph here, our client are construed as third party beneficiaries of the pooling and servicing agreements we, because we're talking about two different properties. OK, created. So you're going to put agreement singular anyway, created by the trust over which the securitization trustee. This is supposed to be sits as administrator. Okay, I'm going to have to change them. And indeed, without such pooling and servicing agreement, our clients and other mortgagers similarly situated would never have been able to obtain financing. What are the benefits to our clients? In other words, hey, well, what y'all going to do for our clients? What y'all going to give them? What they benefit according to the contract? Seeing that they are third-party beneficiaries, investors, otherwise known as trust investment holders. Where? The accounting is supposed to be, where's the account is supposed to be, where is, but it said, where's the accounting associated with the beneficiaries, right? Associated with the servicing and pooling, P-O-O-L, sorry, voice recognition agreement and the P-S-A. As a result of being third party beneficiaries, the trustee is obligated to represent the interest of our clients in their beneficiary capacity. We now charge the trustee with breach and for failure of duty of fiduciary care. You fiduciary. Oh, K. 
can't sweat. He wants to make it last. Anyway, we do not believe that there has been a perfecting of title, nor do we believe that there has been a chain of custody of title, providing that the note and the mortgage have never been separated. We also believe that the mortgage has been securitized separate from the note, thereby canceling the obligation as a result of this unlawful conversion. We need to see proof that there has been a perfecting of title, and we will grant you only 14 calendar days to provide the certified proof to the following address. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, let me explain what we're saying right here so you guys can get it, and then we're going to let you get back to your day. Okay, getting to the point. We believe that the mortgage has been securitized separate from the note. I was just explaining this to somebody. They're saying that they can securitize the mortgage. You're absolutely right, ladies and gentlemen. They can securitize the mortgage, but there are several steps they have to do. However, once they securitize the mortgage, it constitutes a conversion. Why? Because the definition for a mortgage is not the definition that they create on their own when they make these new laws. Definition is the ancient definition, the original definition, that which came first. He who smelt it, dealt it. Okay. It's not the same mortgage. It's now a security. Originally, it wasn't a security. When did it become a security? When they registered it and converted it to a security. It was converted. See, you take something, you convert it, it's not the same thing anymore. It's now converted. For instance, a car that's a convertible is a car that had a roof, but once the roof is taken away, it's no longer a car with a roof. It's a convertible. But you can always add the roof back. Yes, you can. But if you remove the roof from the car totally, the roof will be the note. If you remove the roof from the car totally, it simply becomes a convertible and not a car. You guys do realize a convertible is not a car. A car, the word car comes from the word carriage. Carriage had a covering over top. Car, carriage, carried people along the way. A convertible is not a car, it's a convertible. That's why you hear people say, oh, he drives a convertible. They don't say he drives a car. Oh, well, my, I drive a car that's a convertible. Who does that? Nobody. So when they take the mortgage and they convert it to a security. Remember, they're not trading the note on the market. They're trading the mortgage on the market. Okay. Claiming that they are betting on your payments. And that's why they are offering the trade. Ladies and gentlemen, I am tired. I just wanted to give you that information. So that's me letting you know why I used that language and why I spoke to them canceling the obligation because they separated the mortgage and the note. Why? Because it's no longer a mortgage anymore. It's now a security. It's no longer a mortgage anymore. It's now a security. It's no longer a mortgage anymore. Just keep saying that to yourself. Once they do the conversion, it's no longer a mortgage. It's a security. So we need to see proof that they perfected the title. What do you mean proof that they perfected the title? Well, there has to be a chain of custody of title as long as along with the, um, what do you call that? Chain of custody of title. And, uh, oh God. See, that's what happens. Lose that thought that quick, especially when I'm tired. Ladies and gentlemen, there has to be a chain of custody. It means that they have to have all of the assignments together. All of the assignments, one to the other to the other, and they have to show when these assignments took place and they properly registered each assignment. They fail to register the assignments, then they don't have any jurisdiction. That's the first thing. Second, the mortgage and the note have to stay together. So they'll have to show proof that they stay together. They cannot separate them, file one on a county record, and then file one in the so-called securities market. Uh -uh, can't do that. So we need to pro see proof that they perfect the title. Perfecting title is a very important term. And Oh, by the way, we talked to some of you yesterday about tendering payment. We're going to turn Keith Sweat off because he's about to, he, he wanted to make it last forever, but it can't last anymore because he gone. Okay. He gone. All right. Bye-bye, Keith. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, we talked to some of you yesterday about the term. Pay attention. Term, pay to the order of, and the term, wait, uh, tender of payment, sorry. So, told you I'm tired. Tender of payment is a term. 
You think you know what it means because you've heard it before. And the tender payment means you have to pay somebody. And you don't understand. The term does not require that you pay somebody. It only requires that you make an offer. How do you make an offer? Well, normally, if you're going to pay a company, you make an offer either by using a credit card, a check, or a money order. Remember, money orders are not money. Checks are not money. So you make an offer, and then they cash it, signifying acceptance. So there must be acceptance to your offer. Every offer is not a tender, but every tender must include an offer. Okay, the hour style money orders. Now you understand the logic behind those. Now you understand why I say that they are still working. Okay, you just have to educate yourself as to what tender of payment is. Remember, there is no money. Okay, sorry. Let me let you guys go before I get excited. You know he doesn't like to get excited. Thank you. That's my medication, so he can't get excited. So y'all just y'all just forgive him, okay? All right. Have a good day. Ladies and gentlemen, have a good day, have a good night, have a good life, have a good bye.